This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by the 2012 Ford Mustang. With 2012 closing in, two things come to mind. One, will the world end? And two, it's the time to upgrade your PC yet. Since number two seems a lot more likely than number one, we've asked Lloyd Case back to talk PC upgrades you should be thinking about in 2012. Welcome back, sir. All right, doing well. By the way, there's a podcast I listen to called Astronomy Cast. Uh -huh. And they're co-sponsoring the End of the World Cruise, <laughs> which is basically a science cruise kind of takes down. You actually spin uh, just before Christmas. They go to the Mayan ruins and everything. Oh, <laughs> so, so you can be like ground and zero. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but you know, to prove that the world won't end, you know, it's like. Well, anyway, you may as well have great. some hope. Like, you know, I, keep, I keep thinking of the guy in Oakland that keeps predicting the end of the world right, the day right. and revelations, and, and he keeps being wrong. The. Uh, it, it's a business. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently a very successful one for him. So assuming the world does not end, 2012 arrives. Should we start with CPUs? Sure. I mean, is, Sounds is like a good plan. Ivy Bridge or Bulldozer? Ivy Bridge has been pushed out. Bulldozer right. is so, lame. Right now, is that cruel? Uh, well, it's a say? little cruel. I think Bulldozer is interesting because it's fairly low cost mm -hmm. for your eight pseudo cores. I mean, I hate to call them eight discrete cores. They're kind of hybrid things. They're not they're better than hyper threading right. but not full cores. Anyway, it's a pretty neat architecture and it's low cost. Um, and it's well balanced with for certain kinds of applications. So, I, and, and it's supposed to do better in Windows 8. I mean, okay. uh, Anon Tech did a sort of little thing where they took a look at Windows 8 performance. It's actually better on Windows 8 than Windows huh. 7. So. Why is that? I mean, what, if I'm looking at Bulldozer, it's, you remember when when the first hyper threading CPUs came out and right. so there's no performance gain. And then as soon as Windows, what was it? Uh, 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 Vista came out suddenly oh. performance improved. <laughs> Oh, Same yes, kind of the deal. One good thing about Vista, <laughs> right? Well, Windows didn't. Windows, the Windows architecture doesn't. Right. Uh, current Windows architecture doesn't understand how bulldozer works. So doesn't take full advantage of it. So, so Windows 8 bulldozer starts looking more interesting. If if I want to go AMD now and I'm looking at bulldozer versus Fusion. Now, wait a minute. Having said that, uh -oh. <laughs> Sandy Bridge is still you know kind of outperforming it on most things. So. This is true. Well, let's let's talk about. Um, you know, is it worth still worth upgrading to Sandy Bridge, or should I be at this point? Should it be? It's 2012. Should it be holding off for Ivy Bridge? So, in theory, in theory, <laughs> the first Ivy Bridge CPUs will be socket 1155, which is what Sandy Bridge plugs into, right? Mm -hmm. the, the mainstream ones. Um, so, in theory, a BIOS update in your motherboard and it should, be, should should work. Right. In theory. But of course, we've seen in the past sometimes the motherboard makers don't do the right power regulation, right. that kind of stuff. So you could sometimes you insert the new processor and the and system won't. Boom. Nothing happens, right? But but the, in theory, you know, you can if you have Sandy Bridge now, then you can you can move to Ivy Bridge when you want to. Ivy Bridge has been pushed back, so yeah. And that I, I was funny because I was, I was talking to uh, I was talking to somebody uh, uh, last week. Um, I was talking to Ryan Stroud over at PC Per. And, <laughs> And one of the things I said is like, wow, it's like Intel's like, we have such a lead in performance right now. We can just wait right. to release Ivy Bridge. Let's, let's, we'll get it done right, yeah. You know, it's pretty amazing. Get it done right or maximize the profits off of Sandy well, Bridge. You, uh, <laughs> they're <laughs> they're in the it. catbird seat, right? <laughs> but that, that doesn't, I mean, from the perspective of a user, though, Sandy Bridge, I mean, if you're coming from an, especially if you're coming from an older one, like a P4, right. or even if you're coming from the original Core 2 Duo, it's a pretty significant performance increase. Um, now, Sandy Bridge Extreme, which is the new six-core thing, socket 2011. Um, if you're coming off of an older architecture, not Sandy Bridge, but a really older architecture, that's worth it if you're A, into video editing or something like that, some type of content creation, or B, a really hardcore gamer. Not that the six cores will help right. you as much as the huge memory bandwidth you get with it. Um, I like memory bandwidth. Yeah. And that, Intel has said, socket 2011, Ivory Bridge Extreme, which will, like Sandy Bridge Extreme, will come after their first Ivory Bridge CPUs. That makes sense. So. Well, let's talk GPUs. Any big announcements? I mean, it seems like I, I don't expect any big announcements at CES. Is that wrong? I mean, Stay there tuned. New, <laughs> well, is there a new DirectX there, line there's on There's some the way? stuff coming out uh, in early 2012 mm -hmm. uh, from the various vendors. Uh, AMD and uh, NVIDIA are both looking at 28 nanometer, right? Mm -hmm. Which means a lot more transistors potentially, uh, potentially higher clock rates, better performance. So we're going to see, yes, I think we'll see DirectX 11 and maybe DirectX 11.1 supported in hardware uh, when those come out. And those will be fairly soon, I think. What are your picks for cards? If you can't wait, if you've got to buy a card right now, if Skyrim is driving you insane, <laughs> what cards can I buy now that I won't be really irked? Right. If you want to buy just one weeks. card mm -hmm. with one GPU, don't want to deal with all the d dual GPU stuff, which adds a layer of complexity, then probably a GTX 580 if mm -hmm. you can afford it. 
And if that's too rich for your blood, then a Radeon HD 6970. Okay. Uh, both those can do pretty well. You, you won't be able to completely max out Skyrim, but you'll be able to turn it up pretty high so that it looks really quite good. I, that's the way I play it. That's the goal. So, you know, in terms of like sort of the $100, $150 range, what's kind of the best deal right now? Uh, 100 and, uh, it's sort of towards the $150 range. It's probably like a, if you can find an older GTX 460, one mm -hmm. gigabyte, or a Radeon 6850. So cool. 6870s tend to cost about $180, a little bit more, and that's actually a sweet spot right now. <laughs> it's always a little bit more than I want to spend. Yes, yeah, always sweet just spot. a little bit more. Just, just reach a little bit, Mr. Norton. SSDs, are they going to drop in price, or are they pretty much kind of hit their price points and we're just looking right. at more capacity? So here's what's going on. There's two things that are going on. There's yeah. the floods in Thailand, which, which are pumping up hard drive prices like <laughs> right. crazy, right? So you know, the hard, a 500 gigabyte hard drive is 100 bucks now. Yeah. I mean, that used to be like 30, right? Yeah. I, no. <laughs> we, we've been talking about it. We've been getting questions right. about it. Intel's yeah. like, we, we lo we're losing a billion yeah, dollars right. this quarter because of um, it. Intel, in conjunction with Micron, just announced uh, higher density flash memory chips. 128 gigabits. But that's probably second half of 2012, right. right before they actually ship products and all that kind of stuff. So you know, you got to productize it, you got to be able to do it in volume. Um, so I think SSD prices aren't going to drop just mm -hmm. because they don't have to right. because hard drive prices have gone up and so it makes SSDs look more attractive. <laughs> I was hoping like Intel would decide to like flood the right. market with SSDs and wipe out the hard drive industry. Yeah, that's not going to happen <laughs> just because they don't have the manufacturing capacity. That's a bummer. Well, it's, and it looks like it's going to be probably the better, Seagate says the better part of a year before hard drive prices right. start to drop. Yeah, I think, I, well, prices. I think more like four to five months. I mean, mm -hmm. already Western Digital is making noises that, that they're starting to work on the plant in Thailand that's been flooded. Cool. It's mostly Western Digital that's causing the shortage, by the way, because it was their Thailand plant that was taken offline, and that's most of their manufacturing. Oh, wow. Um, the interesting thing is that uh, on, the, on, the flat, on, the, on the SSD side mm -hmm. is that that's, it's better to buy an SSD in a new system because actually it's more cost effective. Because they're subsidizing the right. cost? Mm -hmm. they, or Some because extent. they get better deals? Uh, a little above. The above. A little above. <laughs> <laughs> um, displays. It seems like the 2560 monitors, the 27-inch, 30-inch monitors, are still going to be too rich for most well, people. Well, the 30-inch monitors will be for some time to come. What's going to happen with that sort of, oh, i got to digress for a second. I saw a gorgeous 36-inch ISO, what was it, uh, 4K by 2K des desktop monitor, $36,000, but hey. man, it was gorgeous. <laughs> now back to more human levels of performance. Um, Displays. I think we're going to see higher density displays come down in price second half mm -hmm. of 2012. And what some of the dis what some of the actual graphics card manufacturers are telling me is that the 2760 by 1440, you know, those 27 inch monitors like the Apple, uh -huh. I'm, the biggest IMAX come with, and some and Dell sells one, I believe. They're going to start coming down in price quite a bit, and that's going to be Ooh. sort of the sweet spot towards the end of the year. So 27 inch. 27 inch, 2560 by 1440, right. not right. the 16 by 9. Right. Okay, and uh, that scales up HD, you know, okay. perfectly well, right? And then, uh, but the 1080p monitors are going to be the sweet spot for a while. I mean, it's hard to beat 200 dollars price right. point. Plus, the glass is compatible with what they're producing. You know, most most of the consumer glass. It seems like most of the consumer monitors well, are using the same glass as you yeah, would use. Yeah, except in the majority an of TVs actually use better quality panels than the majority of PC displays. It's so wrong on yeah. so many levels. Which is unfortunate, well, especially 3D monitors. I hate 3D monitors, and right. I, I don't want to get people, you know, send me back, uh, ugly emails. But the reason I hate 3D monitors is not the 3D part; it's the fact that most of them are made with with low quality panels, and that kind of drives me crazy. So we'll just walk away from 3D monitors at this point. If you want, 3D, I love the 120 hertz refresh rate. Don't get me wrong, but then buy a TV. Right. If you want a 3D monitor, buy a TV. If you want a 24 inch monitor that's 1080p, you might want to buy a TV right. too. Wow, that's a bummer, dude. Yeah. Lloyd, excellent information as right. always. We will see you at CES. No. No? I get to skip it this year. Uh, but I'm going to Germany in, in, at the end of the week. I'll be in Germany. My, my daughter's <laughs> doing her college semester abroad in Germany, so we're going to spend the holidays with her. So Berlin? I come back in New Heidelberg? Year's. Heidelberg? Uh, uh, Berlin and Nuremberg. <sighs> oh, wow. Yep. Good stuff. Berlin's amazing. I highly recommend it. And by the way, they make amazing beer there. I can't drink it anymore, but I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lloyd Case. You can catch Lloyd on Twitter at Lloyd Case and, of course, his work at Maximum PC and PC World and on the web. ImprobableInsights.com is the website. You should check it out. 2012 Ford Mustang is back sponsoring Techzilla today. We're still riding around in our sweet candy apple red 5.0 GT. We do not want to give this thing back. Now, we've showed off the car, we've talked about the engine, oh, I love the torque, the in-dash navigation system, but check out Ford's MyKey system. It's featured in our new Mustang, and it's real simple. Forget to buckle your seatbelt, MyKey's belt minder will chime in to remind you. 
Want to limit your top speed to stay below the speed limit? Keep yourself from getting a ticket in your candy apple red car. My key can help you with that too. Make sure to stay tuned for all of our CES coverage coming up in January. Texel is going to be there with our Mustang scoping out all the latest tech and checking in at the latest from Ford as well. Thanks again to Ford and the 2012 Mustang for sponsoring Texilla today.